up, Airman Mako Two One here. I want to thank everybody uh, who's watching these videos and uh, also the 100 subscribers that I just passed lately. Uh, extremely thankful. Uh, so today uh, we have a simulation of a combat air patrol. Uh, we got three bags on board: uh, five Amrams, two heaters, and a gun, as well as the AT clear. So. I'm just uh, skipping ahead, uh, doing this in a voiceover form, uh, just so you guys aren't watching too much. But I went ahead and uh, jettisoned my tanks, and I still have my center line here. So 11,500 pounds of gas, showing up to the fight here now with with a bunch of gas. Uh, so this was about 150 miles of, of pure afterburner from the USS George Washington here on the Rallying Sidewinder server. Uh, but yeah, here I am. Uh, just uh, watch this guy, this enemy, get splashed, so uh, I don't have to, you know, waste a missile on him. Uh, so uh, pretty useful uh, to have the AT flare. So you know, uh, just pushing uh, further in uh, to enemy lines. I think it's it's pretty useful to to have the AT FLIR just just so I can see when enemies you know shoot uh, missiles at me. Uh, in this particular flight, uh, there were two MiG 29s that I flew up against that uh, shot long range heaters at me, and uh, those can be pretty dangerous if you're not paying attention. Uh, and luckily, with the AT FLIR, uh, I know to flare instead of just drop chaff. Uh, so uh, this first guy. I'm going about Mach 1.4 with that center line still on. And uh, if, if you notice, there's no RWR warning whatsoever. So, you know, we still saw that launch from him on the AT FLIR. And uh, there's the splash right there. And, uh, you know, speed, speed is key uh, in BVR. Obviously, nothing, nothing new there, but uh, you know, the F-18 just you know ma makes it easy. It just gives you so many options for you know using the jammer. I'm also using the jammer here just to get nice and close to these guys. Uh, skipping ahead now, uh, these these two bandits you know basically came out of nowhere. Uh, the SA page basically dropped the ball on me, so I shot that missile just. A Above uh, no escape range, that guy somehow survived, and I somehow uh, managed to to run away from all these guys. So my plan here is to sear these guys into uh, my friendly up ahead on my one o'clock. And uh, really, what I'm what I'm thinking here is I want to recommit. Mach 1.2, it's a little slow, but I think I can uh, manage uh, a sustained turn at Mach 1.2 at this altitude. Yeah, actually, I'm climbing a little bit, but uh, again, uh, just like I said in one of my it's previous bigger. videos, you'll, you'll rarely ever see me in a BVR dogfight below Mach 1.2, just because the for some reason in the transonic regime, the Hornet just has a lot of trouble accelerating uh, under Mach 1.2. So, uh, jammer back on. And uh, I was just trying to notch their radars there. You gotta be kidding. And uh, these guys, these guys are just, are just not messing around. So, I wasn't able to lock them up. Just tons of missiles getting lobbed at me here. So, I'm going to use uh, the thicker air down low and possibly... Get behind one of these mountains because one of these guys are definitely going to chase me at least one that's what i'm thinking because i didn't even get a missile off and sure enough when i look at the sa page this is suboptimal one of these guys yeah, are, are falling situation. so now that i'm seeing the guy on my right is going towards uh that friendly off my right uh i Basically focus all my attention to the guy right behind me going Mach 1.2 just like me. So my plan here is to basically get behind that ridge line up ahead 
uh, turn left uh, just because the peaks are a little bit higher and uh, basically my plan was to just idle my engines and uh, turn around, high G turn, and shoot a missile at him. But uh, the funny thing is, it, it ended up not being necessary because I was looking at the SA page, and this guy who's t who's chasing me, shooting all these missiles at me, he he turned around for some reason. He was like five miles behind me, so it's pretty worried. I was dropping chaff, a bunch of chaff, and uh, yeah, right about now you see that turn. That was a big mistake I was thinking, and uh, went ahead and capitalized. Shouldn't have turned around, pal. Yeah, you can hear my voice there uh, telling him he shouldn't have turned around. But yeah, you're going to see that uh, the AT FLIR comes in handy once again uh, in this engagement. One thing I do want to say, the, the patch notes uh, came out today for the, the most recent update. And uh, apparently Eagle Dynamics are going to uh, fix uh, some issues with the radar on the, uh, on the Hornet. Uh, I haven't really been noticing too many, uh, but uh, that could be because I have my radar uh, data page uh, set to 16. Uh, so it, it'll save each contact for 16 seconds on my radar makes a huge difference uh, because the radar will actually predict where uh, the enemies will be uh, when they're when they're notching you which is basically when the uh, bandits moving perpendicular uh, to your radar uh, so uh, my plan now here is to uh, just fly cold from these guys and uh, just hit the tanker Still have two AMRAMs on board, but 4,000 pounds of gas. I figured uh, in this flight, uh, you know, let me let me just go ahead and get some gas and be a little more dangerous, and uh, you know, be a lot more dangerous at higher speeds and higher altitudes uh, because with 4,000 pounds down low, I just wasn't feeling it. So I went ahead and uh, in this edit, I decided to uh, just spare you guys the air refueling. Uh, so. I yeah, made it to the KC-130, and uh, now I'm flying back in to uh, re-engage. And uh, even with all these hard points and the AT flare, still going Mach 1.5. I'm going to engage one of these guys at like Mach 1.6. Not, not exactly at uh, ideal uh, altitude either, uh, but I'm about to make short work of an F-16. That you see on the uh, AT FLIR page here. Okay, so so here we go. So this is what I was talking about. So uh, do you see how this enemy on the uh, radar page is basically getting uh, darker? It just means that he's not being seen by your radar. And if if you notice, he was in a very steep dive, so he was basically notching my radar. My radar couldn't see him because there was no relative movement. He was going perpendicular. So once he uh, got nose uh, hot again on me, then my radar you know, picked it up, and that's why you see that bright color. But uh, you know, normally, with uh, you know two second interval, what the plane normally comes with, I would have had to restart uh, and you know find them all over again with my radar. Also, my AT FLIR uh, is locked onto him now, so I can see the fact that he shot a TWS missile at me, and uh, yeah, he was only Mach one, so I wasn't too worried. You know, that guy, that guy had pretty much no chance. I was Mach 1.6. And uh, just watching him. I was kind of hoping to watch him explode, but angles didn't work out that way. Uh, so you're just going to see me uh, fly cold for a little bit. Also, uh, jettison those external racks just to get a little bit faster. And uh, this last engagement here of this flight was uh, pretty interesting. What's going to happen is uh, my friendly uh, in front of me is actually going to splash this bandit that you're going to see in a couple seconds on the ET flare. Uh, he actually sp gets splashed and then I accidentally shoot my missile after he gets splashed so I just wasted a missile but 
this is another really good illustration as to why uh, you know the AT flare is super advantageous. There he goes. He, he just blew up right there, and I shot my missile by accident. And uh, that was that was a waste of uh, of of my last missile. But uh, but yeah, um, basically all there is uh, to do now is uh, get back to the carrier. So I believe my bingo fuel was around four thousand pounds. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna fly this uh, Mach one point four momentum. I'm gonna fly this momentum to about forty thousand feet. Get to like point eight Mach. Uh, gonna easily get back to to the carrier with, with plenty of fuel, but uh, but yeah, it's that's uh it's pretty much it for this video. Uh, again, I want to thank you guys for the for the hundred subs. That's super cool. Uh, hopefully, I could fly with you guys someday. Uh, if you're not on these Growling Sidewinder servers, I'm usually on here uh, around. Uh, three times a week I'd say roughly but uh, but yeah I'm excited for the for this new update uh, for the Hornet uh, there's also uh, besides some radar tweaks there's also going to be some flight control logic tweaks as well as some uh, flight model tweaks so I'm pretty excited for that but yeah uh, F F-18 beast of a plane even in these in these long range uh, BVR engagements, uh, you know, I had plenty of fuel to, to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, have a good day.